Hello class, welcome back to Biology 1. This is Sir Alex Basco and today will be our third lesson and we'll be discussing about prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and the plant cells. Uh, but first, let's talk about what are our goals for today's class. For us, first is to be able to distinguish between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and be able to identify their distinguishing features. Next is for us to be able to classify different plants, uh, different cell types, uh, for example, plant cells, animal cells, and be able to specify some of the functions of their organelles. So first, let's discuss what are the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. First, we have to understand that every living organism can fall in either of the two groups. They can either be eukaryotic or prokaryotic. So here are some moving pictures of some of the differences of prokaryotics and eukaryotes. So prokaryotes, as you can see from the picture, has both of them has cell membrane, both of them has cytoplasms and DNA and ribosomes. But one of their differences is that prokaryotes don't have membrane-bound organelles while the eukaryote has. So the organism's cellular structure determines which group they belong. So first, let's discuss what are prokaryotes. So here's a picture of prokaryote. Uh, we have to understand first that prokaryotes are mostly unicellular. And they do not have a membrane-bound organelles. They also lack nucleus, meaning that their DNA, uh, genetic materials do not reside inside a nucleus, but they are floating freely inside them in an area called nucleoid. Second, that the genetic materials are double-stranded, but instead of a chromosome like human have, uh, the genetic materials of a prokaryotes are in a circular or looped form, and we call them plasmids. And prokaryotes are, tend to be very, very small, from 0 0.1 to 5 uh, micrometers. Prokaryotes means pro, before. Karyote means kernel or not. It actually means before nucleus. So before nucleus because they do not have any nucleus. So prokaryotes, some of the things that are found in prokaryotes, one is a nucleoid. Uh, which is the central region that contains the DNA. Again, the, DNA, the genetic material of a prokaryote are not residing inside a nucleus. They are in a, uh, floating freely inside in a central region called nucleoid. But also they have ribosomes which are important in protein synthesis. Uh, they also have a cell wall which provides structure and protection and the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. Cell membrane that separates the cell from the environment, similar with what we have as humans, our cells have cell membrane, but unlike prokaryotes, our cells do not have cell walls. Number five, some prokaryotes have capsules, which is a layer of carbohydrates that surrounds cell walls and aids in attaching to surfaces. Another uh, structure that a prokaryote has is called a fimbrae. It's a hair-like structure that also helps the cells or the prokaryotes to attach to surfaces. Uh, and a specialized, uh, another specialized part of a prokaryote is called a pili, which is another uh, structure, but it's in rod shape and it is involved in attaching itself to another cells and be able to transfer their DNA via pili. And lastly, they also have a flagella which uh, helps them to move. So it's like a tail uh, that helps them in their locomotion or be able to move. So there are two types of prokaryotes, bacteria and archaea. We won't be discussing much about these two for now, but in the following lesson, we'll be discussing the differences between a bacteria and archaea. So bacteria is also called as U bacteria or an archaea can also be called archaea bacteria, and both of them belong in the domain prokaryotes. And another thing that I want you guys to remember is that prokaryotes do not have mitochondria. 
uh, mitochondria may be the first prokaryotic cells that live inside another cells. Uh, and you guys might be familiar with mitochondria because they are the powerhouse of the cell. They are the one creating the ATPs which are necessary for us to be able to function and produce certain uh, or it's the energy needed for us to be able to live. Uh, one of the interesting things about mitochondria is that they have DNA. It's called the mitochondrial DNA because it is believed in the evolutionary process that mitochondria are actually prokaryotes and that our cells engulf this mitochondria and the mitochondria evolve, evolve inside our cells and start to live uh, inside the cell and become a functioning organelle. And the uh, mitochondrial DNAs are actually very important because they are only passed down through mothers uh, to the offspring. So the mitochondrial DNA that you guys have actually came from your mother. And this is a very important in tracing um, genetic materials across a geographical region. So there are three domains that we'll be talking about more later on, which is the bacteria in eukarya. And bacteria in eukarya both belongs to prokaryotes. And the third domain of the small organisms that we'll be talking about is the third one is the eukarya, which we'll be talking about now. So eukaryotes. So eukaryotes are multicellular. So most eukaryotes are multicellular. Some are unicellular, such as yeast but most are multicellular like human beings, animals, and plants. Another distinguishing feature of a eukaryote is that it has a membrane-bound organelles. It also has a nucleus, meaning the genetic materials are found inside its nucleus. The genetic materials, unlike prokaryotes that are in loop or circular form, the genetic materials in eukaryotes are double-stranded and they are in a strand called chromosomes so they're kind of like chain they're longer compared to a circular form of prokaryotes and eukaryotes are larger than prokaryotes usually about 10 to 100 micrometers examples of eukaryotes as i mentioned are animals plants fungi and some protozoans eukaryotes actually means from the uh, came from the word you which means true Eukaryote, which means kernel and nut, and it means true nucleus because eukaryotes have nucleus. So eukaryotic versus prokaryotic or uh, prokaryotic cells. Uh, all life on Earth consists of either being eukaryotic or prokaryotic, and it is believed that prokaryotes are the first form of life, and that eukaryotes evolved from prokaryotes about about three to five billion years ago and the primary distinction between the two is the absence or the presence of membrane bound nucleus so prokaryotes don't have nucleus eukaryotes has nucleus moreover eukaryotic genetic materials are found inside the nucleus and they are strands while prokaryotic genetic materials float freely in the center region and are in a loop form also, eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles, prokaryote, prokaryotes don't, and both has DNA, plasma membranes, cytoplasms, and cytoplasm and ribosomes. Okay, so that's the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Now let's talk about plant cells. So this is a picture of a plant cell. We're not going to talk about all the different parts that it has because in the end it's very similar to the cellular structure we discussed in lesson two. The only difference in plant cells, uh, plant cells are is that they have cell wall, uh, which is unlike the animals and humans, we don't have cell wall, but plant cells have cell walls. That's one of their distinguishing features. And these plant cells are made, our cell walls are made up of cellulose. Moreover, plant cells has a chloroplast, which is the very important part of plant cells because this is where photosynthesis happens. And as we know, photosynthesis is important in order for the plant cells 
plant cells to produce the necessary uh, chemicals it needs to survive and also for it to produce, for example, uh, flowers and fruits. And chloroplast contains green pigments which we call chlorophyll, which absorbs light, which then convert that light into sugar and water and other materials that it needs. Another distinguishing feature of a plant cell is that it has a larger vacuole. If you guys remember vacuole, what, uh, what vacuoles are, this is basically a storage of uh, uh, organelles that functions in storage. For plant cells, it contains a sap which is responsible for the high concentrations of protons inside the vacuole. So, because there is a high concentration of protons, according to osmosis, water moves from an area of low concentration to high concentration. So, because there is a high concentration of protons inside the vacuole, water enters from the outside to inside of the vacuole. And that, when that happens, turgor happens. So, turgor is the pressure due to the water inside the vacuole, which pushes the uh, plant cells to the cell walls giving a live plant its uh, rigid nature so when plants are alive and well they're very rigid otherwise if they don't have any water turgor will not happen and plants wilt and die so those are some distinguishing features of the plant cells as compared to the ones that we discussed in lesson two uh, about animal cells, which is also another type of eukaryotic cell. So our lessons for today, that's our lesson for today. It's very simple, it's very short, but if you guys have any other questions, do not hesitate again to contact me, and have you guys have a good day.